you may wonder, does God still speak today? Well, let me share a story from my past that illustrates one way that he does, a rather unexpected way. <laughs> so way back in 1990 or so, um, I had, was a new Christian, a new believer, was very excited about what God was doing in my life and the changes he'd made, and just super excited to see what God was going to do. I had been pretty much expecting to go to the state university there in town. I was going to get my teaching credential there, and that was kind of my plan. And we had a group from Trinity College up in North Dakota come visit the church. Uh, as a recruiting deal, they did some drama and music and stuff, and it kind of blew my mind. Like, Wait, there's other options besides state college? There's Christian colleges? Uh, uh, and it just kind of blew me away, and so I started thinking about that. And then we had a gentleman come to our church afterwards named Bob Cook. Um, I'm actually still friends with him today, and I don't know if Bob knows this whole story. But uh, he came from Bethany College, which was a much closer one uh, on the coast of California. And he began to share. Um, and I don't even remember really what he said that night. But after the group from Trinity, I was kind of going, Christian College, this one's close to home. This could be interesting. And began to talk with him, learned about the college, and picked up an application, and turned it in. Hey, you never know what's going to happen. Well, over the course of the next few months, and following up with it, uh, got accepted to the college, which was amazing to me. And as part of that, they uh, sent an invite to one of the college days. Hey, come spend a couple days here at the school, stay overnight, uh, Get, go to a couple of classes, get to know the school and say this is where God is calling you to go. Now, I have been to some big youth events. Uh, our youth convention for the state had been there and they had a drama team from Bethany. And I was finally clicking who these people were. Well, I actually ended up, uh, my roommate for that night was actually one of the guys in this mind team that I had watched. And I was just like, you know, slightly starstruck um, because I had just seen them on this big stage. And then I see him in real life and it's kind of like, oh, this dude's really normal. Wow. Shockingly normal. They're in their room telling fart jokes. <laughs> For some reason, they hadn't clued in that, oh, yeah, people do this at college. Duh. But as part of the tour, they are part of the days they gave us a tour of the college. And this is where it really kicked in. Uh, because beforehand, uh, and I'm not into the dreams and visions and all that. I've seen people tell stories like that in an attempt to manipulate and just not into that. But I had had a, a dream twice, which was weird. Same dream where I was walking through this building and, and just hold on to that. So as we're going through the tour, we walk through the classroom. So we walk through the uh, we'd seen the dorms because we'd stayed at them. We went to the cafeteria. We went to the offices. Um, my computer. We walked around and we got to see all of this different stuff. Well, they were building a brand new administration building, a big three-story building called Stoll Center. And a lot of it wasn't done yet, but they took us in. The ground floor was finished and already open. The offices upstairs, they were still finishing up. But they went ahead and gave us a tour of these offices that weren't quite done yet and then showed us the downstairs, which had their student council rooms, a computer study center, uh, the receptionist. And that was all neat. And I'm walking through this building as it's under construction and I'm just going, I've seen this. I've, I've been here. I know what this is. And it was weird because it was my dream that I had had like a month before. And I'm all of a sudden I'm doing this dream in real life. And it's, I mean, I'm sitting there and I'm just starting to go. And the, the guy giving the tour looks at me and he goes, are you okay? And I'm just like, I'm deja vu is not strong enough. Uh, I know this place, even though I've never been here. He's going, okay. And we have one more room to walk into, which was kind of the fellowship area. And I looked at him and I says, yeah, and... If we walk through that door and there's a round table with a Trivial Pursuit game sitting out in the middle of it, in the middle of the room, I'm going to freak. 
and lo and behold, we walk through the door and there it is. And I hadn't seen the room before. I hadn't been on tour. I didn't know. And there's the Trivial Pursuit game right in the middle of the room, exactly like it was in my dream. And I was just like, uh, uh I didn't like totally spaz going, ah, you know, it didn't do anything like that. But it, it definitely was a, a moment where I was like, all right, I, I feel like God was telling me something here because I don't experience stuff like that. I don't see it. And yet here it was. And it, that moment, that was when I made my decision. I'm going to Bethany. I really felt like God had revealed this to me and said, this is where you're supposed to be. Okay, I uh, guess I will pay attention to you. And I've had a couple moments like that over the years. They're never expected. They're never ones that I have said, God, you better do it this way. Um, and I think that's part of the key is when we say, you know, Lord, give me some direction. But I'll leave it up to you and how and where and why and, and what method and everything. When we try to put God in a box and say, God, you have to do it this way. Or God, I expect you to do it by this date and time and this certain method. God doesn't play our games that way. But when we are sincere and open and we're saying, okay, Lord, I really want you to do what you want and show me and open up the doors, he will. And usually it's in ways that we're not expecting. I've had times when I have applied for jobs that I really wanted. Oh, God's directing me here. And then I didn't get the job. And it was just like, but, but, but God. And then I had another opportunity and another opening in a different direction entirely. Um, in fact, the whole reason we came up to Missouri, we really felt at the time that God was leading us to plant a church down in Florida, uh, to reopen a church, actually. There was one down there that uh, had closed up, and, and, and let's just say, long story short, a lot of stuff that we did, and it just wasn't happening. And we had a lot of frustration and we were just like, well, God, why would you do this? Why would you tell us to do this and not let it happen? And then things happened that brought us up to Missouri. And I believe I told that story in another video. And again, it was just like, oh, okay, now I understand. All these things that we did down there to get ready for that church opening were preparing us for what we had to do here even though it wasn't where we thought, even though it wasn't what we expected. But we were very much, okay, Lord, show me where and get me there. If this isn't it, I'm open to go to where you do want me to go. And it's flexibility in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> I kind of joke because I have this deal now where I can fly standby. And one of the things I have quickly learned is you don't pl lock your plans in on a certain flight. You may know where you want to go. You may know when you want to get there. But if you are stuck that I have to be on this flight at this time on this day, there's a good chance that's not going to happen. You have to be flexible. Okay, I know I want to get from point A to point B, but I may have to go to point C and D in order to get there. Um, and the flight I'm expecting to take may not happen. And maybe I'll have to take a later one or an earlier one. Or I may find out I've got 20 minutes to get through security to catch this plane because it was a different one than what I was expecting. And they're pushing me through. Thank you, San Antonio. <laughs> but it's, I'm learning that it's very similar to real life in that you don't know. You may think you have your itinerary all set. And then it changes and you end up in a completely different direction to get where you want to go. And God will use those moments to direct you how he wants to. Be flexible. Keep your ears open. Keep your heart and spirit open. And let him speak to you. And he will. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.